All right, the recording has started. We're going to pray together, and uh, then we will get our class going. And uh, could I just request somebody to pray with all of us, please? Anyone could unmute your mic and uh, pray with the class so we can get started. I would like to do that. Okay, Anita, would you like to pray with the class, please, and we'll get started. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful morning, Father, as well as our class, Father. I'd like to bless, uh, love to bless, uh, tell you to bless each one of us, Father. Thank you for this presence, Father. Uh, I would like to tell you that please help us to understand all these, all the classes that we're going to listen, Father, today. And help Pastor to um, teach us, Father, and uh, Holy Spirit guide us to understand the whole class, Father. And be with us, Father. We praise you, we worship you, and we glorify your holy name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Once again, um, welcome. I'm sorry about last Friday. I missed class last Friday. Just need to take time to do something else. So uh, I had to uh, be absent. Couldn't be there in the class for all of you. But we will make up. Uh, today, uh, we are continuing our study on uh, our identity in Christ. Um, we're going to move into uh, lesson number 10. I think that is, um, yes, yeah, section 10. Um, which uh, I put these PDF notes out there, uh, actually put it there last week. Um, we are going to talk about um, the fact that we are, <clears throat> we are blessed in Christ. So last week we talked about the fact that we are children and joint heirs. So we have been glorified uh, together with Christ. And um, God has given us this place of honor as heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. And so we also said last week that because we are sons, we are heirs, joint heirs. And that means we have been given an, an inheritance. Um, we are sons of God, sons and daughters of God. So what we want to do today in this section, and I will share the PDF in a, in a few moments, is um, go through, uh, you know, uh, what is in our inheritance. And so in this section, section 10, uh, just try to itemize or just list, you know, just list uh, different things that are part of our inheritance, spiritual inheritance in Christ. Um, and this is not necessarily a complete list because some of these, some of the things that we have already seen, I have not uh, necessarily included here. So, for example, when we began this study, we talked about the fact that we, one of the first things we talked about is we were, we have been justified and made righteous. Uh, you know, that's a very powerful truth um, for us to receive as part of our inheritance. We talked about being sanctified and made holy. We talked about uh, the fact that we are redeemed. We talked about uh, we are identified with Christ. Uh, we are free in Christ and so on. So those things which we have looked at in separate sections, I have not included in this uh, uh, itemized list because we've already studied each of those in detail. But what I've tried to do in this section is uh, just try to put a, put a list out all the other things that we need to know. Uh, is part of our inheritance, meaning God has already made it available uh, for you and me. And therefore, the key is for us as sons and daughters of God to live out of this, right? To live out of our identity and out of our inheritance. That's the key. That's what, you know, we should seek to achieve. And before we close this, uh, uh, this whole uh, course, towards the end of the course, we will keep some lectures just to talk about how do we live out of our 
inheritance in Christ? Uh, how do we live out of our identity in Christ, right? So what we are doing is we are establishing our identity and our inheritance. It means we need to understand uh, what God has done for us and what God has given to us in Christ. And then we need to also learn how to live out of that. How do we walk in our identity and in our inheritance? So we will touch on that towards the end of this course. So today uh, we will talk about our inheritance in Christ. And this is in uh, section 10, the PDF is available. So I've just called it blessed in Christ. And here what we're doing is we're just going to list out, you know, um, all the additional uh, blessings and things that are part of our inheritance. That's what we want to do. And as we go along, we'll also mention, you know, so how does that impact our life here on earth, um, our day-to-day -day lives? Uh, because God has given that provision for us. How does it affect us? So let's begin by just revisiting a scripture that we have already seen in Ephesians 1 verses 11 and 12. Could somebody please read that out loud for us? Ephesians 1, 11 and 12, please. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Man, thank you. So it says, in him, that's in Christ, we have obtained, we have received an inheritance. Right? So this is something God has given to you and me in Christ. So in Christ, God's given you an inheritance, you see, and um, uh, this inheritance, it belongs or is available to every one of his children. And uh, we have said earlier that, you know, an inheritance is of no use uh, if you don't know what is in it and if you don't know how to, you know, receive that inheritance, take advantage of that inheritance and enjoy that. But what we must understand is God has given to us an inheritance. We have obtained an inheritance. And, uh, you know, and us walking in the inheritance uh, will be for the praise of his glory. You know, ultimately, uh, it's going to bring praise and honor uh, to the Lord when we walk in our inheritance and when we walk, um, you know, according to the counsel of his will. And you see several scriptures, other scriptures that talk about this. I'm just referenced some here. Acts 26, 18, uh, uh, Paul, uh, the, Lord, the Lord speaks to Paul. He says, you know, he wants He's going to use Paul to open the eyes of the people, turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. Right. So here again, so another scripture to telling us that when we turn to the living God, uh, he brings us out of from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. We receive forgiveness of sins. We are also granted an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus. So there's an inheritance given to all those uh, who are set apart by faith in Jesus. We also saw this scripture from Romans 8, 17, that if we are children, then we are heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So if we are children, we are also heirs, heirs of God. You know, to be an heir simply means you're, you're, the, you're the one who's going to receive the inheritance. And the Bible says we're heirs of God and we're joint heirs. We're co-heirs with Christ. So we share in the same blessings that was given to Christ as, as he walked on the earth as the Son of God. Everything that he walked in is available to you and me as sons and daughters of God. So what we're going to do today is just kind of go through some of these things that are our of our inheritance and uh, you know talk about how they impact our lives but to at the very beginning we need to establish the fact 
that we are qualified to enjoy the inheritance. Right? That means God doesn't say, look, I've given you an inheritance, but, you know, uh, you're not qualified to enjoy it. Only, you know, certain people can walk in the inheritance I've given them. That's not the way God does. He has given an inheritance to every one of his, everyone who believes in him. And we are all equally qualified to enjoy that inheritance. Okay. So. Could somebody read Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 for us, please? Colossians 1, 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance, the sense in the light. Thank you. So it says, give thanks to the Father who has qualified us. That means he's made us fit. He has um, made us fit, capable, worthy to partake, that is to enjoy our share of the inheritance of the saints. That means the inheritance that belongs to the saints in light. So you need to you know, understand this truth about yourself as a believer that God has already qualified you. He said, look, you're fit, you're worthy to enjoy your share of the inheritance that I've given to the saints, to all the saints, to all the believers. Right? So don't ever let the devil tell you or anybody else tell you that you're not worthy. Right? Oh, um, you know, that person, some you know, you might think, okay, that person is very prayerful. They pray a lot. That person is very, you know, he, he or she is very um, committed to the word of God or something, you know. And so we tend to look at other people and say, you know, like they're, they're really good people and they are probably qualified uh, to enjoy uh, their spiritual inheritance. But look at me, you know. Um, I don't pray enough, or I don't read my Bible enough, or I'm not good enough, whatever. We tend to discredit ourselves. We tend to disqualify ourselves by the way we think. But I want us to learn to think in, in line with the Word of God. And the Word of God says that God has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. He's qualified you to share in the inheritance, to enjoy the inheritance that he's given to all of his saints in the light, those who belong to him, right? So we are qualified. Now, of course, before we can uh, begin to enjoy the inheritance, we need, we need to know what that inheritance is. And we are going to get to know that through the word of God. It's through the word as the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to what's in, uh, in the word. Uh, we are going to get to know our inheritance and then we'll be able to partake of a share of it. So the only requirement at this point is, hey, you and I need to know what that is, what our inheritance is. And then we receive it by faith. We walk in it by faith, believing God. Right. So uh, Acts 20 and verse 32, could somebody read that for us, please? So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Mm. Amen. So the Apostle Paul uh, is here in Acts 20, 32. He's actually speaking to the leaders yeah, of the church in Ephesus and he says you know brethren I'm commending you to God and to the word of his grace so I commend you to God and to the word right that means you know it's like his, this is his final message he's closing up his message to the Ephesian leaders he says brethren this is what I want you to do I want you to be committed to God and to the word and because I'm commending you to God and to the word Right? Or I am recommending you, I'm commending you to God, to the word of his grace. 
Why? Because that word will, will build you up and give you an inheritance or enable you to enjoy your share of the inheritance that God has for all those who have been sanctified. So the key here is this, the word, because it's the word that's going to build us up. It's the word that's going to give us revelation and understanding and show us how to walk in that inheritance, how to make that inheritance ours. Right. So we need to spend time in the word. We need to let, you know, get revelation of the word. Uh, we need to learn from the word. What is our inheritance and how do we receive it? So the word is able to build us up and uh, give us an inheritance. Right. So the word of God is important. Now, combined with that, of course, is the eyes of our understanding need to be enlightened. So when Paul prayed for the Ephesians, he prayed here in Ephesians 1.18. He said, the eyes, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding, that's of course he's referring to spiritual understanding, the eyes of your spiritual understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That is, what has he called you to? What is the future he's called you to? And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Right? So as believers, we need to have our eyes opened, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Right? And I put it in simple English. It's like our eyes need to be opened or we need to receive a revelation of what? Of the hope of our calling. That is, what has God called us to? The future he's called us to. And also, the riches of the glory of his inheritance, right? That means this, this, uh, the, the, you know, this inheritance that God has for His saints, His people. It's rich. It's overflowing. It's abundant. But then we need to have our eyes opened, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, so that you may know that you may know, right? That's very important for us as believers. The eyes of our understanding need to be enlightened with the Holy Spirit. He needs to open our eyes. So we know, okay, that's what God has given to me, and I'm going to walk in it. Now, let's think about this. If we don't know what is in our inheritance, We can't receive it because we don't know it's there. Obviously, we'll not make an effort to make it ours. And if you don't make it ours, what will happen? We're going to live at a level that's far below what we could be living at because we are for feeding, we are missing out on our own inheritance. Now, that's not God's fault because God has given inheritance to all his children. And he's already said, look, all my children, all of God's children are qualified. They are fit. They are worthy to partake of this inheritance. And he has also given to all his children, the word of God, the word of grace, and the Holy Spirit to open our eyes so that we can know the rich inheritance he has given to the saints. So from God's side, he's, he's done everything. He's given the inheritance. He's given the word. He's given the Holy Spirit. To whom? To all of us as children. Just all, all, all of God's children are equally blessed. Same inheritance, same word, same Holy Spirit. But now, it's our responsibility to go to the word of God. You know, like Paul said, I commend you to the word of God. Go to the word of God. Because this word's going to bring you to that place where you can enjoy your inheritance. 
So it's our responsibility to go to the Word. And with the illumination of the Holy Spirit, we receive revelation, we receive understanding. Okay, this is in the Word. This is what God has given to me as an inheritance, as a blessing, as He gave to all His children. And I must make a choice that I'm going to walk in it. I want to receive what's mine, every aspect of it, and I'm going to walk in it because God has given it to me. And this is spiritual reality. This is truth. It's not, uh, you know, a uh, uh, fiction that we're talking about. It's not some imaginary thing. This is God having blessed you with an inheritance. So it's important for all of us to get to know what it is and how to walk in it, right? So all that we've covered in this course so far has been an unveiling of our identity and our inheritance. Little by little, we've uncovered. And now if you're coming into this chapter, we're going to itemize some of these things. Some of these things may be a repeat. Uh, I just felt it's good to highlight maybe a couple. And the rest will be things we haven't touched on uh, up until this time. Okay. Uh, let me pause here, see, uh, see if there are any questions before I move forward. Uh, is everyone with me? Any questions so far? All good? Okay. If it's quiet, then I assume that uh, all of you are following me and uh, no questions. Okay. So let's move forward. Okay, great. Thank you. I see your comments in the chat. All right. So the yeah, the first one on this list that I put is reigning in life. Now we have seen the scripture earlier, but I put it again here just to highlight this truth, which is part of our inheritance. Okay, so could uh, somebody please read Romans chapter five and verse seventeen for us, please? Romans five seventeen. For if by five seventeen, for if by the one man's, for if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, Romans 5, verse 17. What is Paul saying? Look, if by one man's offense, obviously he's referring to Adam, you know, one man's offense, Adam sinned. What happened? Death reigned. Death ruled. So, death ruled. Adam sinned, death ruled. Death came into dominion, place of dominion, through the one, because of that one man. Then he says, much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. So this is you and me. We have received abundance of grace. God's abundant grace. And you, you and I have received the gift of righteousness. What will happen? We who have received, those who receive abundance of grace and gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So, we contrasted this when we looked at Romans 5. One man, Adam, he sinned. He put us all in subjection to death, to sin, 
Satan, sickness, and death. Everything between sin and death, we came in subjection to. Through one man. But through the one, Jesus Christ. So there's someone else. Through the one, Jesus Christ. What happened? Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness was poured out on us. Through Adam came sin, condemnation, judgment, Satan's dominion, sickness, death. And we became subjection to, in subjection to all that. But through the one, Jesus Christ, God poured out abundant grace and gift of righteousness, all of us. Resulting in what? This abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, when we receive it, we reign in life. Death reigned. Now we reign. What does death represent? Everything between sin and death, sickness, disease, Satan, everything. That dominated us. But now we reign in life. We dominate sin. Everything between sin and death, we dominate. We dominate everything. So we have authority and dominion over whatever Adam put us in subjection to, Jesus put us over. So that's what we have in Christ. We have dominion and mastery. That means we're going to reign, we reign in life over everything that's between sickness and death, sin and death. All of that, everything that Adam put us in subjection to, you and I are going to reign over. So, that's how we're supposed to live. So, while we're in this earth, while we're in this world, people face all these things. Because we are still in this fallen world, we are going to face everything between sin and death. Sin, sickness, disease, Satan, everything between sin and death, we are going to face on this earth. Because that came in through one man, Adam. We're going to face it. But because you and I have received abundance of grace and gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ, we are going to reign over these things. We are going to have mastery over, we are going to have dominion over these things. So we learn to live that way. So when you face things in this world, we will face it. When you face any everything that's wicked and that's because of sin, and, uh, how should you and I respond? So I have dominion over this. I will take authority over this in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the sickness, over the disease, over sin, over Satan. Uh, I take authority, authority over all these things. And I choose to reign over them. I choose to exercise dominion or mastery over these things. Because that's part of our inheritance. Now, there are a lot of believers who don't know this. Or they may have read Romans 5.17 and just read it. But not embrace the revelation of the truth that is bringing it to us. And so they may not... You know, live out of it. They may not make the effort to say, hey, I've got to dominate this. I can't let this control me. But I've got to rise up above it and tell it to go in subjection because I am supposed to reign in life through Jesus Christ. So that's how you and I must do. Right? We must rule and reign over these things. Right? And how do you exercise authority? By the words you speak. You know, how does a leader exercise authority? Through the words they speak, through the decrees they issue. So you speak into your world and you command these things. When these things rise up, you command them to be in subjection because this is your inheritance. This is your provision that you will reign in life through the one. Jesus Christ. 
Secondly, Ephesians 1, verse 3, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We are blessed, right? Um, somebody could read Ephesians 1, 3. I know this is scripture we all know, but let's read it again. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, please. Ephesians 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Thank you. So, in Christ. We're talking about in Christ. What blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What has he done? He has blessed us. He has blessed us. In Christ, you have been blessed. So God's already blessed you. Right? Now, I know we pray and say, God, bless so-and-so or bless me, uh, which is fine. In, in one sense, you are receiving what God has given to you. But the fact is, he's already blessed you. He's already pronounced you blessed. He's already blessed you and me. With what? With every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. What does that mean? It means every blessing that comes from God, who is spirit. Every spiritual blessing. So it's a spiritual blessing because it comes from God and God is spirit. So, but every blessing that comes from God, he has already blessed you and me with. So you and I are not trying to convince God to bless us or give something to us. He's already given every blessing that he can give. He's blessed you and me with healing, freedom, provision, victory, uh, every blessing that comes from God. He says, I've blessed you with. But it is in the heavenly places. That means it's this, this phrase uh, is another phrase, another way to say in, in the spiritual world in the heavenly places. It's, it's in the unseen realm. It's in the spiritual realm. Now, you and I are living in two realms. We are in this natural realm, that the world in which we live. But because we are spiritual beings, we are also living in the unseen realm. We are also living in the spiritual realm. And in that unseen realm, in the spiritual realm, you and I are in Christ, and there, God has already blessed you and me with every spiritual blessing. He says, look, I've given all of this to you. It's your blessing. It's, it's for you. So what we have to do is learn how to take the blessing from the heavenly places or from the spiritual realms and bring it into the realm in which we live naturally, that is, in the natural world. Right? So that's our responsibility. He's given it to you. But uh, we got to start with believing this. Start with recognizing this truth. Start with saying, look, I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So that means in the spiritual realm, everything that comes from God is upon my life. It's been granted to me. Uh, it is mine. Everything God can give, it's mine in the spiritual realm. So in the spiritual realm, God has made this available. So you and I are truly blessed. We are blessed people. So now we say, okay, if that is true in the spiritual realm, then I'm going to take that into the natural, bring it into the natural. And the key here is faith. Right? And we are learning about faith uh, on Fridays. Our faith is what moves these blessings from the spiritual realm into the natural realm. That's why faith is so important. So we learn how to have faith in God. And by faith, we move these blessings from the spiritual realm into the natural realm. Right? And while we do that while we go about doing that exercising faith in god 
you know, we must also have a good attitude, have an attitude of blessedness. That means, you know, uh, in every situation, as I've written here, in every situation, you see yourself as a blessed person. So in life, we will face all kinds of situations. There will be difficult situations. There will be troublesome situations. So what do you do? In those situations, see yourself as a person who's blessed. So how can I do that? You know, how can I see myself as a, a blessed person in, in difficult situations? Well, because in the spiritual realm, that's who you are. You are a blessed person because God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Now, in the natural, in the natural world, you may be facing hardships, you may be facing difficulties. Uh, we're not denying those hardships or those difficulties. But what we are saying is that very moment when you're facing difficulties here in the natural, in the spiritual, you are blessed with every blessing that comes from God. And everything in the natural can change. So you, by faith, can bring those blessings out of the spiritual into the natural and cause the natural situations to change. Right? Uh, just, just here are some other scriptures in relation to this. You know, James 1.17 says, Every good and every perfect gift is from above. So God has blessed you and me with every good and every perfect gift. It's from above, from the Father. He's made it available to you and me. Uh, Psalm 103, you know, just lists some of his benefits. You know, it says, forget not all his benefits. What are his benefits? Well, he forgives all our iniquities. Um, he also heals all our diseases. Uh, every affliction, he heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. That means he uh, brings us out of troubles and problems, and lifts us up, he redeems us. Uh, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. That means he pours out his loving kindness, tender mercies over our lives. He satisfies our lives with good things. That means he brings good things into our lives so that our youth is renewed. Our youth is renewed. And even our health, strength, and vitality is affected so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord even executes righteousness and justice uh, for those who are oppressed. And, and Psalm 103 goes on, right? But we're just highlighting, look, these are the benefits. So these are the blessings God gives to his people. And God is saying, I have already blessed you with every blessing that comes from me. He's already made all of these things available to you, right? Uh, Paul writes in Romans 8, 32, you know, if God didn't spare his own son, but uh, delivered him up for us all, uh, won't he, you know, also give us freely all things? I mean, if, if God gave the greatest gift, which is his own son, freely, then what is it for God to give us Anything else? Healing, provision, uh, blessing in our lives. You know, what is it? Those things are smaller compared to God giving us his own son. So that's what Paul is saying. Hey, God didn't spare his own son. But if he gave up his own son for all of us, then you know what about all the other things? He'll freely give us all things. That means God is a very gracious God in giving us all things. And one last verse here, in Luke 12, 32, Jesus says, Do not fear, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That means he, if the Father is happy to give you what's in the kingdom. Right? It's the Father's good pleasure. I mean, the Father's good pleasure. Your Father is really happy about doing this, giving you what is in his kingdom. Okay. Any questions so far? We've covered uh, uh, a couple of more things. Everyone is with me. Any questions? All 
Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions. All right. Let's move on. The next one is this, that we are enriched in everything by him. Enriched in everything by Christ. Let's look at that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Could somebody read this, please? 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 7. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Right. So Paul is writing to the believers in Corinth. And he's, he's, he's letting them know what, what has happened to them spiritually. He says, you were enriched in everything by him. It means, you know, the Corinthians came from very difficult backgrounds. You know, we have read uh, 1 Corinthians 6 where Paul says, you know, such were some of you, and he mentions, you know, all, all kinds of things that uh, we wouldn't consider part of a, you know, a good upbringing, things like, uh, oh, you know, all kinds of things, evil things. And he says, you know, so these are the people, they've come to Jesus, but he says, look, something has happened to you. You were enriched. Enriched simply means to be made richer, right? You are enriched. That means maybe you had a little bit of it, but now you have a plen you have plenty. You have more than enough of it. So you are enriched. In what? In everything. In every way. By Christ. Including in all utterance and all knowledge. In all utterance, all utterance means all speech, things that you would speak. And all knowledge is things that you would know. You are enriched by Jesus in everything. In all utterance and all knowledge, including these things. Even as a test, I'll explain what that means. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift you come short you're not lacking in any gift so obviously this utterance and knowledge is connected to this thing on gift right even as a testimony of christ that means christ working in and through you the testimony of christ was very evident was very con was confirmed so if you piece what he's saying together was five, six, and seven. What, what is Paul saying? He's saying, you know, Corinthians, when you came into Christ, he just blessed you. He enriched you in every way. I, I'm paraphrasing these verses, okay, just to help us understand what Paul is saying. He's saying, Corinthians, when you came to Christ, you were enriched by Jesus. In everything, your whole life was made so much better. You were enriched by him in everything, including the gifts, the utterance and revelation knowledge gifts the utterance, that is, the spoken gifts, the expressions of the gifts, uh, vocal gifts, you know, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, and all knowledge, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Right? It says, you were enriched by Jesus in everything, even in all these utterance and all the knowledge gifts 
why do we say that? Because you know it's one sentence. It's, it's broken down as five, six, and seven, but he's writing one sentence. The, so you look at it as one sentence. Uh, you were enriched in everything by him and all utterance and knowledge, even as a testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. That means Christ working in you was very evident. The testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short to no gift. The word gift, charisma, charis, um, uh, sorry, charisma, uh, the gift, which later on in First Corinthians 12, he talks about the gifts. Right? So these new believers were enriched by Jesus in everything. And Jesus was working in them so powerfully. They didn't lack any of the spiritual gifts. Utterance, including utterance and knowledge, that is the vocal gifts, things that you speak and utter. The knowledge gifts or revelation gifts, gifts by which you know. Right, so he says you didn't lack any of these things. So how does that apply to you and me as believers? You see, what God would do for them, and what Paul has written to the Corinth obviously applies to all of us. It's not just them that they, when they came to Christ they were enriched. It's all of us as believers. So what does it mean? It means that when we came to Christ, our lives were enriched in everything by Jesus. So when you think of yourself, you need to think of yourself as somebody who has been enriched in everything by Jesus, by him. You know, so um, uh, don't ever think that, oh, uh, you know, I, I can't, I'm not fit, I'm not worthy, I can't do what God's called me to do. Um, I can't accomplish the purposes of God for my life. Uh, I'm so insignificant, I'm so, uh, I'm nothing. Look, we are all just ordinary people. But when we come into Christ, what happens? He enriches us in everything. He's made your life rich, full, overflowing. And... You don't have to lack in the expression of the gifts of the Spirit. So, even here, when it comes to spiritual gifts in Christ, you have been blessed. You have access to all the gifts of the Spirit, all utterance, all knowledge. You have access to all the gifts of the Spirit so that the working of Christ can be made manifest in you. Right, so don't think that in the in the in the area of gifts you're coming short. No, you're enriched by Him in everything, including all the gifts, the vocal gifts, the revelation gifts, the power gifts. These are all yours. It's been given to you, and you don't lack anything. Right, and as we all eagerly wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to pause here. And uh, we'll come back and I'll, I'll take some more time to explain this, uh, you know, some things that are related to this. So we'll just pause here and pick up from here uh, right after our break. Okay. And uh, I trust all of you are following me. Um, we'll come back after this break, quick 10 minute break. We'll continue from where we paused. Uh, and please feel free uh, to ask any questions as we go along. Okay. All right, so we'll see you in a bit, just uh, uh, 10 minutes to have a quick break, and we will be back. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. 